Hey there, boys and girls, damas de caballeros, bienvenidos, welcome to Middle School A. We are <coughs> going to be beginning our journey talking about some number theory. We're going to be talking about numbers. You've been learning about numbers for a while in your math career. We're going to get a little more specificity. From today is kind of where your abstraction of math gets. We're going to get into, we're going to move from concrete very concrete stuff into more and more abstract things as we get further on. And this is kind of the first taste of that. We're going to kind of, this this lesson today is going to be really vocabulary heavy. We're going to talk about uh, three different types of, of numbers, as it says in the title, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. And then, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, and that's that's it. We're going to talk about what they are and what these things are as we continue on down through this course. We'll learn how to do different operations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing with all of these, some of which you probably already know. And we're going to get do reviewish stuff and we're going to get more and more complicated as we go. So let's dive in. Later in about Algebra 1, you get a full what I call the real number amoeba which has got this kind of layered thing of these of these different types of numbers with this little little bitty set and then these other things later out and then there's this one that kind of lives out by itself and then there's the real numbers which circles everything which so we're going to add to that this is going to be kind of the very first piece of that so when we're talking about different types of numbers back in kindergarten or probably even preschool you learned about numbers like <coughs> 1 2 three, and et cetera. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Skip a few, a hundred, right? You know, all of those things. Then at some point that year or the next soon after, you learned about one more number and that number was zero. By the way, these numbers haven't, these, this set of numbers without zero, they have their own name. They're called natural numbers. We're going to kind of start building from the whole numbers though. So, we added zero. And once we added zero, we probably didn't know this at the time. <coughs> Excuse me. We probably didn't know this at the time, but we had taken our first journey into number theory because we'd started talking about um, whole numbers. Let me fix my thing back from another recording. It's probably a little better. Maybe I'm a little too loud. You can. It's going to sit this way for the rest of the next few videos. You can change it as you need. So these numbers, number zero, one, two, three, you, you probably learned them as the counting numbers at first, probably a little bit too loud. Sorry. I know I just said it was going to change, but, uh, that seems to be about right. Yeah, good. Sorry. I was doing some other videos on our, our other YouTube channel, Mead and Mischief, if you want to check it out. Um, but anyway, you probably learned these as the counting numbers. But their official name is the whole numbers. Numbers. I keep doing that. Last several videos I've done, I keep writing. Instead of writing O, I write A's. I don't know where that's, that's coming from. So whole numbers. In case you've never seen this with this, what you'd call hashtag, what I'd call pound sign. Uh, and that means this, this is an abbreviation for numbers in case you've never seen that before. So we're going we're gonna to do a little bubble around this. So whole numbers, things like 7, things like 12, things like 56, th things like 5,280. All of those are whole numbers. And you may, <coughs> you may or may not learn about the next set of numbers. This year might be the first time that you learn about the next set. And the next set is called the integers. Okay, Raise your hand if you've heard the word integers. <laughs> yeah, I can't see you, but, you know, there it is. Feeling like sneezing. If I have to sneeze, sorry, I'll cover up the thing so it's not so terribly loud. Having allergies the last few days terribly. <coughs> I don't know if the weather's changing or what. Integers. So in case you don't know what integers are, or even just for formal notes in here, integers are whole numbers, but they're also negatives. So zeros included. And one, two, three, etc is included and then also <coughs> in the integers we include negative one negative two negative three etc right 
So integers are positive and negative whole numbers. You may have known that word. You may have known about negatives. You may not have, but that's what those are called. Whenever we start to, start to include uh, negatives, those are called integers. Now, there's one more set that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about in this course. So let me, let me add to our amoeba here. There's integers. And then the next step on top of that, that we're going to spend a good amount of time, like a lot of time talking about in this particular class, is called rational numbers. Okay. So rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. So things like one half. That's obviously can be written as a fraction. One half is one half, right? Things like five twelfths. That's a, or five fifteenths, apparently. That's what I was going to write. So sure, why not? That'll work. Five fifteenths, five twelfths. That one could be reduced, but we will talk about that later. Lots later. Um, <coughs> or lots about it later, not lots. Just watch the videos and take the class. It's going to be great. It's going to be grand and glorious. So 5 fifteenths. So a number that can be reduced, that is, uh, that's accidental. That's a happy little accident. But just because it can be reduced doesn't mean it can't be written as a fraction. So that can be written as a fraction. So what about 16 thirds? That's also a rational number. That is literally a fraction. So it can be written as a fraction. Now, you could convert that to a mixed number, something like, this doesn't equal 16 thirds, but something like two and two fifths. You may or may not see, have seen how to convert two and two fifths to just one fraction, but it can be done. And if you can turn it into a fraction, it's a rational number. We're gonna learn later eventually in, in courses, at least by algebra one, if not, if not sometime sooner, that there are some numbers that can't be written as fractions. But what else could be written as fractions? So something like 0 0.28. That's a rational number because we could turn that into a fraction. If you don't know how to turn that decimal into a fraction, don't worry. We're going to get lots of practice on that. But it can be written as a fraction. So decimals also are rational numbers. The number 5 is also a rational number. Now you'll notice, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bubble here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my final bubble in, in where in the, the level of the amoeba so far. Again, this could be zoomed out. There are, are other, other things still in this, this amoeba. But <coughs> you'll notice that this sort of green blob is also inside of the yellow, yellow blob, is also inside of the purple blob. So anything that's a whole number is also an integer. Anything that is an integer is also a rational number, but not every rational number is also a whole number because one half, actually anything up until five is not a whole number. But can we write five as a fraction? Yes, we can. In case you're thinking, no, you can't. Yeah, you absolutely can, right? In order to write five as a fraction, we just put it over one. It's a fraction now, right? So we can write it as a fraction. Right? So that, that works out, out just great. If it can be reduced down to a fraction with whole number on top and bottom, it's a, it's a, it is a rational number. Something like 23%, that's a fraction. That can be written as a fraction, and that's a rational number. Something I didn't include any, but something like negative. Uh, was there any other? We could write, we don't tend to, these are rational numbers, but we don't tend to write things in this format, but you could say, eight to three so like a ratio would also be a rational number if you haven't seen that don't worry you're going to see that that uh, i think we covered a little bit in this class and we definitely will see it in the next few years if not in this class as well right so all of those things can be written as rational numbers we could come in here and make negatives of any of these because negatives are also rational or negative rational numbers are absolutely legitimate okay so that's all there is really to this lesson this this categorization of these three things when you see something if you were looking at like a homework or a test problem related to this you might say it might say something like tell whether this number is a whole number and you could put a w or an integer, and you could put an I. I actually means something else, but at this point, I is fine. Z is actually correct, but we'll, we'll let I be just fine for now. 
<coughs> excuse me, or is it a rational number? And so it might, so for the, the example um, or the problem, it might be something like 56. So if, the, if they gave you 56, then you would list, okay, this is a rational number. This can be written as a fraction. It is a integer because it's a positive or negative whole number. And if it's a positive or negative whole number, it's a whole number. Basically, if it's a rational number, it's also an integer and it's also a whole number. If it's an integer, it's also a whole number. Does that make sense? But if it's, <coughs> so that, there, there we go there. No, no. I wrote that backwards. Sorry, it's, it's late. I, I'm recording this video later in the evening than I intended, but life happens sometimes. All right, it's the other way around. If it's a whole number, it's also an integer, right? If we look at our diagram, the whole number is inside of that one. Whole numbers is the littlest one, right? So if it's a whole number, it's also an integer, and it's also a real number. If it's an integer, it's also a real number, a rational number, excuse me. So if, it's a, if it is a W, it's also everything else. That's that, and that's one thing that you need to know. If it's, if it's a whole number, if it's a W, it's the other two as well. So what if you had an example, example number two, something like negative 38? Well, is that a whole number? No, it's not a whole number. So we can cross that off, right? But it is an integer, right? So it's an I. And if it's an I, then it's also an R, right? Let's do one more, ex well, maybe two more examples. So what about negative 33 over 5? Is that a whole number? No, it's a fraction and it's negative. Is it an integer? No, because it's because it's it's not a negative whole number. Integers can be negative, right? 38 is an integer, so it's only an R. Now, in at least my class and probably most classes at around this this level at, at fifth grade, sixth grade, and eight, somewhere around in there when you're probably taking this class, you probably won't see an example like this, but I'm gonna throw this in there as a bonus we like bonuses. If you got something like this, say square root of three, y'all probably don't, lots of you watching this video are like, I don't even know what a square root is. But if you got that, then this is none of those sets. It's a real number, but we'll talk about that later. So I know that, and the main reason I, in case you're, in case some of you are like, oh my gosh, why you throw that in there? It's confusing. The reason I do is because some students out there will be asking, well, is there anything that's not a rational number? And there are, they're called irrational numbers. And we'll talk about that in later courses. Thank you for watching this video. If you're one of my students, don't forget to do your homework and all of those things. I look forward to seeing you in class with questions and bright, shiny faces and all of those things. And if you're not one of my students, I hope this video was useful to you anyway. Let us know in the comments, regardless of who you are, how we can help you with math content, science content, general homeschool knowledge, and those kind of things, transcripting and, and all of that kind of stuff and, and nonsense. It would be very helpful if you hit that subscribe button and if you would take a like, put a like on this video and comment and let us know how else we can help you. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.